When you think of flight in Minecraft, these days you'd probably think about Elytra. But for a brief time, piston airships and automated flying machines were seen as the cutting edge of Minecraft technology. And on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, 2b2t.org, they were seen as an innovation in an otherwise barren digital wasteland. Today's video discusses the history of flight on the server, but in order for you to fully understand it, I need to share some of my personal experiences as well in order to give context. So I hope you don't mind if I do a little storytelling. I'll be using historical footage and screenshots in order to give as much insight as I can. Today we'll discuss the origins of flight and how eventually powered flight was used as a weapon of war on 2B2T. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get started. In early 2015, 2B2T was updated to 1.8, which was known as the Bountiful Update. I was very excited when this update finally hit the server because of one reason. Slime Blocks. Slime Blocks introduced new mechanics that made powered flight in Minecraft possible. When the update hit, I logged on to 2B2T and made my way to some fresh chunks for testing. I picked a design that would work well on the server and made some minor changes to it. And in January of 2015, I became the first player to use Powered Flight on 2B2T. The first player to use a vanilla mechanic to achieve something that previously on the server was only possible with exploits and hacking. While this accomplishment was just for fun and for bragging rights, I started to consider how Powered Flight could be used somehow on 2B2T. And then, it hit me. A few years back, in 2013, two of the most famous 2B2T players, Pyrobite and iTristan, used a backdoored plugin to become server gods for a brief time. They famously used it to teleport to the world border but they also used it to find and grief Pop Bob's end base, who at the time was one of the server's biggest griefers. It turns out that his base was really not that far from 0, zero in the end. All end bases at the time were only about 1,000 blocks away from the main island. It was then that I realized that powered flight on 2B2T had a practical purpose, traveling in the end dimension. At the time, the end only consisted of the main island, with the entire rest of the dimension being empty space. But this space went out millions of blocks in all directions. All 2B2T players before this had simply bridged out from the main island, created a platform, and then went back and destroyed the bridge to stop people from finding their bases. An airship would remove the need for a bridge, and you could travel infinitely in any direction you chose. Since the airships could be stopped and started at will, they could be used as floating platforms to begin base construction. It was then I had a new goal. Create an end base farther out than anybody had ever done before. But there were some obstacles to overcome. 2B2T's lag conditions and disconnects. Flying machines were not always safe. It was possible to fall out of them if you didn't have the proper design. And if you were over the void, well, it'd be a long fall. If traveling in the end was going to work, an airship needed to be immune from TPS lag all the way down to zero, and from randomly getting disconnected. I wanted to make sure that my design was going to be safe for end travel so I went to spawn in order to test the machine in lag conditions. In February of 2015, I did the first flyover of 2 b 2 t spawn area. It was weird flying over this wasteland that two years previously I had been trying to escape, but during this test, I made some discoveries. By using a minecart as the cockpit seat, it solved the disconnect problem. In Minecraft, if you disconnect from a server while riding an entity, you will still be riding it when you log back in, assuming it's in the same position and nobody else has loaded the chunk. And on my design, instead of having the minecart out in front of the piston, I made sure to glitch it into the piston head itself. 
This weird trick actually solved the lag problem, because instead of the minecart glitching through the machine and falling in lag, it would stay snapped to the piston, almost like super glue, preventing the minecart from ever coming loose, even in intense lag. From testing it out, it seemed the design could work, but all that was left to do was actually go to the end and try it. Plans changed, however. I was invited to join the largest active base on 2B2T at the time, Asgard 2. This was an invitation I could not turn down. At the time, about half of the active player base was at this base. It was civilization. I put the end plans on hold temporarily, but kept thinking about them. At this point, it was spring of 2015. Most 2B2T players at the time were still unfamiliar with powered flight, so a lot of my comrades at the time, such as Pyrobite, Sato, and Henry, were surprised that this was possible. I taught some of them how to build it and use it, and we started thinking of other ways to use the airships. It was during this time I was given the nickname, The Pilot of 2B2T. Judge Holden even made a reference to this nickname in his comic series about 2B2T. Sato asked me if weaponizing them was possible. It was, but it was very resource intensive, so I never bothered experimenting with it past just lighting TNT from it manually. Airships would not be used as weapons on 2B2T. Well, at least not yet. In May of 2015, after Asgard 2 had fallen and the third incursion at spawn had come to a close, I decided that it was time to exile myself to the end in order to carry out my plan of creating an end base. I found a decent spot on the main end island that wasn't directly on an axis but had no other obstacles in the way. I didn't have any valuables with me, only items that I could use to become self-sufficient or items that I was willing to lose. I brought saplings, water source blocks, and melon seeds. It was here that I launched my airship for the first time. To my delight, it worked, and my airship began pushing itself into the vast emptiness of the end. I sat comfortably for about 1,000 or so blocks until something happened I will never forget. As the ship traveled, I looked over to my left and I saw something starting to form on the edge of render distance. I didn't know what it was, so I stopped my airship and bridged over to investigate. It was one of the largest and most ambitious bases I had ever seen. It was Space Valkyria, and I had found it on accident. I didn't know what to think. This absolute beauty had been hiding in the end untouched less than 2,000 blocks away from end spawn. Jack the Ripper, the founder of the base, did not expect someone to use an airship to travel in the end. If this advanced base could survive this close to end spawn, making my base much farther out would be that much safer. After leaving a sign, I continued on my airship until around Z coordinate 5,824. From here, I stopped the ship, built a small platform, and disassembled it. I didn't feel safe yet, so I reassembled it facing 90 degrees to the right, on the negative x-axis. From here, I traveled another 8,000 blocks, until I stopped at the coordinates negative 8,517, 5,823. Since my airship traveled about 8,000 blocks per hour, this made it only a two-hour flight taking lag into account. It was here that I would begin building my base. By placing the first block, I set the record of building farther out in the end than anybody else had ever done before. On top of the airship, I began constructing a platform base that would have everything necessary for survival. I called it the DFC, which stood for Detroit Flight City. Now, why did I call it this really random name? Well, after seeing Space Valkyria, I felt my base was going to look like Detroit in comparison. As I expanded the platform and added decorations to it, I started to realize the potential it had. 
Since Asgard 2 had recently been griefed, perhaps many were looking to create end bases or for somewhere to go. I plan to make the DFC a travel hub that players could use in order to launch airships from. It was a safe location, off-axis, that was not terribly difficult to get to if you knew the coordinates. Perhaps 2B2T's future was in the end. Airship travel was the future. 2B2T's era of flight was about to begin. But then, plans changed. Summer of 2015 arrives, and Mojang announced plans to expand the end dimension by including floating terrain, end cities, and a new form of transportation, wings, which would later be called Elytra. It was over. All of our plans and ideas would never come to fruition. End terrain meant that the DFC would easily be found, and Elytra meant that airship flight would be slow and archaic in comparison. I publicly released coordinates to the DFC and told people they were more than welcome to take the beacons and resources I had placed once 1.9 arrived. I thought that powered flight would become nothing more than a novelty on 2B2T. I couldn't be more wrong. Fast forward one year and 2B2T's YouTube invasion of 2016 is in full swing. This massive server expansion brought in players that were far more knowledgeable of flying machines and redstone mechanics than I was. One of them was Basti VC, a German 2B2T player. And during the Russia war, we enlisted him in our ranks so that he could use German engineering to weaponize flying machines. He created a design that would use an exploit to create infinite TNT. He used it to make a massive trench at spawn in order to stop rushers and other new players from escaping. A machine that I had originally used for peaceful travel had become a weapon of war. As the years went on, many similar machines were built for both construction and destruction purposes. In 2017, Mr. X used a bomber to grief the overworld highways leading out of spawn, and the destruction from this can still be seen to this day. In just a two-year period, we went from first flight to large-scale destruction. Necromite used a wide flying machine design in order to eliminate large bodies of floating water near spawn, proving that machines could be used for drastically changing already griefed landscapes. Well, that brings us to today where most of the original airship designs from 2015 no longer work on 2B2T. Powered flight and end expansion was an idea that once seemed like it would bring about a new era on 2B2T, but ultimately never came to be. A peaceful machine became a weapon of war. But hopefully, this video has given you some insight into one of the lesser known histories on 2B2T. It just goes to show you how much history there is to this place and how much of it has still not been documented. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now for more 2B2T content. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which are both in the description down below. Will airships ever see any other uses on 2B2T? I guess only time will tell. If you plan to play on 2B2T for yourself, just remember to stay alive out there. Take it easy, and we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the flight.